guys, and welcome to two seconds of history. As you probably know, we are Maria and Nuria. As you may remember, last week we recommended you a book, Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. <coughs> so we decided to share with you the parts that have shocked us the most, that are the role of women in the Middle Ages and the marriage in the 14th century. <laughs> We're only going to talk about rich women because we base our explanations on the information given in the book. We're going to start off with the analysis of the female character's behavior because we think it's a good idea to introduce you to the topic of our video. Juliet is a model daughter. She always obeys her father. She never breaks the rules. I just want to break the rules. She's polite. Therefore, she acts like the society demands. However, when she meets Romeo, she starts <laughs> That's mess. Romeo, she starts. She starts to change. Although when she meets Romeo, uh, her parent, parent. However, <laughs> however, when she meets Romeo, she starts changing her way of acting. Although her parents are not aware of it. We think it's a good idea to join Lady Capulet and Lady Montague's analysis because they're just the same character but in different families. So their main aims in life were to satisfy people around them, to obey their husbands without replying them, to pray and to weep for the dead. The nurse was a woman that had to behave as she was told because it was her work. What are you wearing on your face? I don't know, but I can see things better. It's amazing. What's on your teeth? I have no idea, but it's uncomfortable as hell. Why are you wearing trousers? You are wearing them as well? Why are they ripped? What's this? And this? And that? Shut up! Who are you? My name is Hamleta, and she's Romeo. Where are we? At my house. How did you get here? We were in our way to the castle in which we live when we saw some weird device that had something written on it. Something like... Time machine. Yeah. Time machine. Yeah. And we don't know what it means, but when we touched it, we appear here. Then I guess that you are from the Middle Ages, aren't you? I suppose so. Then great, can you help us? We were just starting to record a, a video about women of your era. A what? A video? Yeah, please, just help us. Okay, just tell us what we have to do. We were about to explain the conclusions that we've reached relating to the role of women after reading the book of Romeo and Juliet. We have divided these ideas into three different parts. Society point of view, Obligations and behavior. Mm. Shall I speak using the past? Yes, because we are in the 21st century. <gasps> yes. In general, women were undervalued and considered to be inferior and weak by men. Their husbands owned them and as a consequence of that they showed off the ladies as if they were objects and for this reason 
they were like trophy wives. Women didn't have the freedom that you have nowadays by a long shot. Women were as sexist as men. This means that they did nothing to change their social situation. We think this is because they didn't even contemplate the possibility of having a different way of life. Its reason is that they were taught this way since they were born. For example, religion was one of the main aspects of their daily life. The Bible taught the population that women were less important than men. This left a scar in the ideology of the population as we can clearly see in the play. We had many obligations. Some of them were as follows. To pray, to weep for the death, to give birth to children, to give a good look of ourselves, to obey our husbands, parents, family, um, to take care of our children, houses, etc. Yeah. We didn't have the same rights as men. We couldn't take any decisions, work, or even defend our beliefs, opinions, or points of view. We've done some research recently, and we've found some curiosities about this topic. One of them is that appearance was really important at that time. In fact, Romeo fell in love with Juliet's physique and not her way of being, uh, her personality, her character, or her interests. This leads us to the most well-known literary topic, love at first sight. We've also realized that in the book, the only female main character is Juliet. In fact, in the whole play, there are 3,054 lines approximately, and only 255 lines from women. We can even observe this in the title of the play, by these women that it's Romeo and Juliet and not Juliet and Romeo. Now we're going to move on to marriage. There were two kinds of laws that related to this. The secular laws and the laws of the church. On one hand, the laws of the church carried out everything that was related to the creation of the bond of marriage. If you don't know what it is, it's an agreement that unites one person to another through marriage. On the other hand, the secular laws were the ones that were in charge of money and properties. If the couple, if the couple agreed to marry, the marriage was approved. A marriage based on words and promises only could be denied by their parents. Girls, girls could be legally married at the age of 12. The couple couldn't belong to the same family. All marriage bonds should be made in front of a priest. Marriage vows could be clandestine, like Romeo and Juliet's wedding, or public, as the matrimony that Paris and Juliet would have had. The door of the church was the place where financial and property arrangements were made. Most of the weddings were performed because of family interest. Therefore, lands and money were even more important than love. For this reason, dowry was essential. Dowry was the money and properties that the family of the wife gave to her husband at the marriage. So, another time, women were treated like objects at other price. This is the end of the video. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Subscribe. Check out all the social media. Bye! Bye.